One of the things I like to do if I meet somebody in the lawn care business is to check out their equipment setup. In this video, I'm gonna go over my equipment with you in detail, show you what I'm using both from a weed control and fertilization standpoint, as well as a mowing standpoint. Let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Yardbook. If you're in the lawn care business or thinking about starting one and need a software, go to yardbook.com and sign up for a free account. I've been using Yardbook since 2015. Well, here it is, my lawn care equipment setup. I have in my third lawn care business. The first two I focused primarily on mowing grass. This third one I focused primarily on weed control and fertilization. But I do have a lot of grass in my own house. You can see tire tracks I'm out here early in the morning. And I do uh, mow my grass. And actually I've been mowing grass once a week. My uh, dad has had uh, some health issues recently and I've been working with him mowing some yards. Uh, and so I'm getting back into the swing of things of mowing grass. But primarily I focus on weed control and fertilization. But let's go over the mowing setup and the weed control setup and just have some fun talking about equipment now my truck here well let's just start with saying it needs some brakes i got some brakes uh coming on the front today it's grinding pretty bad but this is a 2011 f-350 with dual rear wheels and it's a gas burner and i bought this thing about three years ago and when i got it I just, I loved it because it had this flatbed on here. It had the dual rear wheels, which was great for what I do. And there's just so much room back here to put fertilizer and things. You see, I built these little wooden compartments here to hold these two gallon sprayers. What I like about the flatbed, it's just easy to mount stuff on there. So I've got a box mounted underneath, got a box mounted on top. I've got the uh, rack, we'll get to that here in a minute. But uh, on this side, of course, got the hose reel and got two backpack sprayer racks mounted on here. So because of it being a flatbed, it, again, so much room back there, but I can just walk up to this a backpack sprayer and put it on my shoulders because it's already basically the right height and you just mount these racks straight on here. It's just very convenient having a flatbed. I certainly prefer that over a normal pickup bed. This is my 400 gallon gram spray rig. A lot of you know that I have been working with gram spray equipment for a long time. This uh, is a split rig. So on this side, it holds about 300 gallons, that side about 100 gallons. And the useful part of that is we might, uh, in our situation, maybe dealing with different grass types, or you may have different two different products you need to apply for whatever reason. So I'll put, let's say I'm, I'm working with Bermuda and Zoysia lawns. That's primarily the two grass I deal with. So I've got my mix over here for those. And on the small side, maybe I've got something else in there for Centipede and St. Augustine. Or another example, maybe I'm in the springtime and I'm out spraying pre-emergent in this side but on new signups I may have to put something else over there because they're the yards are a little bit in a worse situation or maybe the crabgrass has already germinated so I had a, a crabgrass post-emergent stuff like that um, this thing has the the Hane, I believe I'm saying that right h-a-n-n-a-y real I think it's a 300 foot hose and of course people wonder yeah it's got the magic button here to wind it in for you so that's great um, but this thing's been awesome mine has a, a bean piston pump on there it's got mechanical agitation on on the big side jet agitation on the small side and it's just got a little honda engine over there that makes this thing go uh, but it's been a great machine for me we'll start on the back and work our way around you see here this is a uh, what was the ground logic machine mine still is branded under ground logic but this was bought out by Briggs and Stratton is now branded under Ferris. And so try not to show my car tag too much here. But but the reason I have this machine, it, it does a, a few things well. One, it's small and it fits on this rack. This rack comes by a company called B and B Technologies out of Nebraska and they make custom racks to fit these smaller spreader sprayers. This uh, is the, the larger of the machines like as far as the pathfinders go they have one that has a little bit smaller hopper and a little bit smaller tank this one's bigger so the hopper i think holds around 150 pounds the tank is a 16 gallon tank so i can spray over an acre with this the spray system's not great but this machine it it handles well i can haul it on this rack it's very easy to learn how to use and the main thing i like about it it holds a hill very well i live in a hilly area and this machine does great when i'm working on hills so overall uh, I, I like this machine I don't know that it's built to last just forever. There's some things that I would improve on it, but it's something I do use a lot with my business. You make fun of me if you want, but I carry this little Milwaukee battery-powered blower in the back of my truck. 
it just used this one battery. This thing actually has pretty good power for a handheld blower and I like it because I don't have to crank anything, just pull the trigger and it goes. I'm only using this basically if I'm blowing fertilizer or something off the sidewalk. If I'm spreading fertilizer and I throw a little bit too much on the sidewalk, I get this out. So I'm not out there doing some big leaf cleanup job with this blower. But for what I need, it does great and it's simple to just keep on the back of my truck. I really like this solo chest mounted spreader. In my opinion, uh, this thing is great for small properties or properties that are so hilly you can't get on it with a push spreader, ride on spreader, whatever. And so this thing holds, I think, 20 pounds per fill up. And I use it a lot. I might use it to put out um, some kind of insecticide in, in flower beds or in the yard or on small yards I'm fertilizing. And a lot of times you'll have that little section of grass in between the sidewalk and the curb. And I'll, I'll put this around my neck and, and just in there, grab it with my hand and sprinkle it on that section versus trying to throw it and spread it with a big machine or something like that. So these things are very handy hold up well again with all kind of stuff that deals with fertilizer it is corrosive but i found this thing i do have to oil up the moving parts um, but it has lasted very well and i highly recommend this solo spreader i'll put some links in the description of some of these products if y'all want to check them out my little handheld sprayers go milwaukee uh, gave me this machine here and they come out with these recently this is a two gallon battery one so i push that button it comes on it runs off the little m12 battery and this thing is awesome i i really like this milwaukee had made a, a backpack sprayer it had some negative uh, feedback. I had one, I thought mine lasted a while, but I really like this. It has great pressure. You can adjust the dial one to three. I keep it on three is high. And then I have my nozzle adjusted to where it just kind of missed. But very heavy duty hose on here and just comfortable design. So I've been using this thing a whole lot. I've got some Pro Sedge mixed in here right now, spraying Nut Sedge. And then I use these little two gallon Smith sprayers they are um, good not great is what i would describe them as they're, they're about 40 something bucks on amazon i have bought a lot of these they don't last forever uh, sometimes this hose will start to kink but overall i think for the money this is a, a pretty good two gallon sprayer and you can see i i carry about four of them on my truck with me moving over this is one of the new additions this year this is the 2023 z spray mid i have been partnering with some of these companies like z spray and they provided this machine which is awesome and i'm telling you i have been using this and it is fantastic now i haven't personally used one of the older z sprays to compare it to because this one it was a remodel they changed a lot of things we actually have a video on youtube uh, if you search in lawn care life z spray you'll probably see it but we had one of the z -spray spray reps come over and a friend of mine brought a older model z spray and he just sort of went over in detail all the changes that have been made on this new model i've got the foam marking kit here and what that does is on the end of your boom it drops bubbles that last about 10 minutes in the lawn and on the end of your path so when you're making a path and spraying all you have to do is line up 10 inches between your, your bubble bubbles when you make the pass going back because and that really helps to be able to see where you go, especially for us with warm season lawns where it's a lot more difficult to see your tire tracks in the grass. This thing has a huge hopper on it and it is fast. I mean, this thing goes over 10 miles an hour. Now I'm not using it at that speed. I'm usually around five miles an hour when I'm spreading and spraying. But I'm telling you, my property is three, three acres of grass probably. I have about four acres of, of of land with maybe three acres of Bermuda. And the difference in me driving around spraying with this thing has been unbelievable. I'm still learning and getting used to it, but I've been very impressed with how it holds on a hill. I do have a, a six by 12 uh, trailer that I haul it on. And overall, initial impressions on this thing are fantastic. Again, there, there's the junior, the mid, and the max. This is the mid, and uh, the spray capabilities have been fantastic for this. On the mowing side, I've got this Toro. Toro provided this baby two years ago or something like that. And I've been mostly using it to cut my own property. This mower has held up very well. And I like the power. You see, this is the Toro 2000 HDX. And it has some fancy things like LED lights. I even got a 
USB port here and you charge your phone or something like that. So uh, it's pretty cool. I, I like personally the way it handles. It's just very smooth. It's got the my ride system on the seat. So it's comfortable through uh, hitting bumps and things like this. This is not like their, their top of the line one, but I've been very impressed uh, with the quality of cut and the comfort of cut with this particular mower. This is a 60 inch mower. And I've got the advanced chute system mounted on the side of mine. I've always been a big fan of these chute blocks because I like the versatility of being able to open it up or close it depending on the situation. So I'm using this. When I'm out wide open spaces, I'll leave it open. Of course, I get near a house or a car or anything like that, then I'm gonna close it off. You close it off, it does a little bit better job of mulching. But for me, it's more about uh, safety and being able to close it when I need to, and it just works off a simple handle. My string trimmer here, this is a Husqvarna. I've been using Husqvarna trimmers for a long time, though I've been, I said earlier, I've been working with my dad mowing lawns, and he has a little steel trimmer that I've been very happy with it as well. But I personally like the lightweight of the Husqvarnas. The, the one I loved, I had for a while, was a 326 LS. They don't make that one anymore. Uh, this one is, is not like a top of line by any means. I mean, this is the 322 L but it is plenty powerful enough for me just out mowing around the house and things like that and I would think for a business owner this would be fine now if you're out mowing really really tall stuff you're going to want a, a more powerful one I had uh, a 525 LS at one time from Husqvarna I liked it as well uh, I put the speed feed head on mine I personally love the speed feed head and I typically use the smaller speed feed head it holds about 12 feet of line I think so I, what I'll do I'll keep an extra uh, cold up 12 feet of string in my pocket when I run out of line out trimming I don't have to walk by the truck I just pull the line out load the, the trimmer head up 30 seconds or so and I'm back up and running sometimes don't even shut the trimmer off so as my backpack blower goes I like red max and this is what I used to use when I was mowing grass a lot the Red Max EBZ 5150. Now this is like not their biggest one by far. It's kind of the midsize. They have the, the 8500 series. I'm not sure what they call it now. Uh, and then the 7000 kind of series, the 6000 series, the 5000. So there's at least three models bigger than this one. But when you're just blowing grass clippings off a, a small house or whatever, small driveway, and this is fine. Now if you, again, doing big old leaf cleanup jobs, then I would certainly recommend getting one of the bigger ones. But I like the, the the light weight of this one with the power combination and red max is just the first blower that i ever bought when i started a lawn biz i got a red max and honestly they've never given me any reason to look at other brands i'm not saying other brands are bad i've just had very good experience with red max particularly the blowers i've not um, used the trimmers and stuff like nearly as much but i love a red max blower and this one in particular is i've had maybe three of these and when it came time for me to get a blower from my own house this was the one i went and bought on the other side i've got these green touch sprayer racks that I keep on my truck I got two of those they really improve the buckle system on them they, they used to have a buckle that had some problems it would come unloose they've got this new buckle system and it works great very simple design you just bolt it onto the bed of your truck and it just you know buckles right there and you can adjust it right here so uh, this I bought on clearance at Walmart it's a backpack spray it's actually pretty decent it's battery and this is a uh, one that I've had for a while. I always get the name wrong. Is it Jack Toe or sorry? I, I pronounce it wrong sometimes. It's Jack Toe J A C T O. And this is the HD 400. It's a four gallon sprayer. It's not battery power. They do make battery powered as well. But this one you just pump up. But a lot of times, what I'll do, I'll keep something in there for flower beds like here. So I've got a product called SureGuard mixed with glyphosate. And I might keep something else in here. But a lot of times, I'm using the handheld ones as well but i love being able to mount these on my truck so this is my money making setup i'm out rocking around in this uh, f-350 nothing fancy and got a great spray rig on the back got some new brakes going on today carry my spreader with if i'm using the little one on little properties the big one on big properties and of course my mowing setup rocking the toro the husk farm trimmer red max i've got other stuff i mean i've got more lawn equipment i didn't want to drag it all out but just going to show you kind of the main stuff that i'm using for my personal use around my home also for my business i really appreciate you watching today i also wanted to announce the 2024 lawn care life conference coming up february 23rd and 24th near springville alabama which is just outside of birmingham and there's a link on the website at lawncarelife.com that's also where you'll find resources 
like the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. If you want to get into weed control and fertilization like me, that's a video course that could be very helpful. There's pricing charts and other stuff over at LawnCareLife.com. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.